the sense of, right, I'm in the front line, I've got to get fight for my gang. So what they're doing is they're getting away with their outlaw behaviour and it's getting more and more extreme. I think it's more likely than not innocent people are going to get caught up in it. It's bad guy versus bad guy. A war that's been fought for a quarter of a century. The Viking Tavern of Milpera was turned into a battlefield here this afternoon. It began with the Milpera Massacre, a shootout between banditos and comancheros that left seven dead. Over the years, vicious turf wars have drawn in other outlaw bikie gangs. There have been mass brawls, gun battles and drive-by shootings. Bikie clubhouses have been blown up or firebombed. For the most part, the violence has taken place out of the public's eye. But all that changed yesterday when the gang war arrived at Sydney Airport. And these guys were like, hey, hey, and just punching him. And then all of a sudden, um, a whole gossip of guys came through the crowd. Is it officially back on? It's been back on for some time. The, uh, the gangs have been taking pot shots at each other oh, for a good six months or more now. So it's, uh, it's just only basically from our point of view coming out into the mainstream now. Journalist Paul Kent has been investigating the latest outbreak of violence among bikies. We know that the drive-by on Sunday morning was notorious on a Bandito's. A couple of days earlier, there was a Bandito's drive-by on two houses, one at Prospect, one at Doonside, on two notorious houses. Then a few days before that, there was a drive-by drive on the way back again, where it was again Bandito's being attacked by notorious. So it's ongoing. We had a common chair who was kneecapped last week by Hells Angels. There are 39 outlaw motorcycle gangs active in Australia. The biggest and most influential are the Hells Angels and the Banditos followed by the Rebels, Gypsy Jokers, Outlaws, Comanchero. The gangs have 3,300 fully-fledged members, but experts say the number of people directly associated with the gangs is as high as 20,000. We should have no doubt that outlaw motorcycle gangs are part of a broader problem of organised crime which is not being tackled. Retired in this state. detective Clive Small says the bikey problem has been bubbling away unchecked for years and now it's at boiling point. We've had this impression for some years now that bikies have kind of been under control. Is that right? No, I think that's quite wrong. Um, the bikies groups uh, are a major part of organised crime. They play a dominant role in the amphetamine trade in Australia and they've been growing quite significantly um, in the late 90s to early 2000s. I mean, they gave blood, they went to toy runs, but within that, um, they called themselves the one percenters and for that reason, they were outside the law. And that part of it, I guess, was a bit scary. Lindsay Simpson co-authored Brothers in Arms, an expose of Australia's bikey culture. In order to get the inside story, she had to infiltrate the gangs. You've got a, a situation where it's very hard to actually uh, break into the gangs, but it's certainly something that we should be looking at. I mean, if it spills out into the public place and people are getting killed, whether it's bikey people or, or the general public, it's certainly something that we, we should be concerned about. The reason for the latest flare-up is competition. For years, there have been unwritten rules between gangs about who controls what in the drug trade. But now there are new players in the game with little regard for old agreements. The new gang notorious actually don't ride motorbikes. Why they are considered a, a bikey gang is because they operate within the bikey guidelines. They make their money out of drug production, which is the amphetamines and all the, the chemical drugs. They are moving into bikey territory. They are taking business away from the, the established bikey gangs. So they're working as a, business, as a bikey business. They just don't ride motorbikes. It takes, if you like, a tipping point or a crisis to be reached before the governments will act to do matters of substance as opposed to issues of political expediency. What you need is a long-term commitment and a coordination between the states to tackle what is a national problem. On their websites, motorcycle gangs honour mates who've died. It's feared there will be many more as the war rages and rivals seek revenge. In the meantime, the rest of us are in danger. How long until an innocent person is caught in the crossfire? Yesterday they picked bullets out of six houses and uh, 